Okay, so I'm not even going to lie, you guys. Haven't looked for a Chewy blog today because there's some stuff we need to talk about about Pathfinder Kingmaker that I've had just, just right here. Just right on my chest for a little while. And since we probably still have a little while, I guess, like, knock on wood, here come all the blogs we're going to miss before the important blogs drop. Now's the time. Pathfinder Kingmaker, of course, I refer to the CRPG, has done a lot of things really wrong as far as the lore goes, as far as playing a character in like a true tabletop RPG, which is what we're trying to make here. Granted, I love the game. We're going to stream it front to back. I'm going to finish it and I play it on my free time too. But there's some things that I really hope Alcat Games improves upon between this one and the next one. So let's talk all about it, shall we? If you're liking what you're seeing, a like, subscribe, ding that bell. We usually stream Kingmaker Thursday nights, 7 to 10. However, we'll be streaming Saturday night this week around the same time. In any case, this episode of your Pathfinder content, that's Kingmaker stuff this time, was brought to you in part by Dragon Nine Hide. Or, you know, the guy who got a billion hero points for teaching me how switches work. Anyway, let's hit it. Okay, so in broader strokes, terms of like how flanking works in terms of how a reach weapon works, things of that nature. I have a couple of like, hmm, kind of complaints, like I wasn't expecting it, but they're not nearly as bad as the things I'm gonna bring up now. First and foremost, and yes, I know a mod exists for it. No, I have not experimented with it based on how my Kingmaker party and the, the small army of Mastodons in our wake looks. One of the things Pathfinder Kingmaker is missing the most is item crafting for a couple of reasons. First off, the game is, and as a credit to them, is chock full of a lot of items, a lot of weapons, a lot of very unique weapons as well, exotic or otherwise, to make sure your Kingmaker character can be what you want them to be. Within the first, like, two minutes, you open up a treasure chest and, oh, look, a fishard, an exotic reach weapon with an 18 to 20 crit range. How'd they put my elven curb blade on a stick? I don't understand how this works, but of course you take it. You take it not realizing that as an exotic weapon, you're probably not proficient and you can't just slap it on and take the minus four to attack rolls. No, rather your character will just smart off at you for the notion. So what do you do? You get to level three, you burn a precious feat, and suddenly you're good with a fashard. And then the game starts handing you agile light picks, it starts handing you magic long swords and things, but never does it ever, to my knowledge, I could miss something. My Kingmaker knowledge is not as vast as my Pathfinder knowledge. Never does it ever hand you an enchanted fashard. And then you start fighting things with damage reduction then you start missing because that's the nature of Pathfinder. A magic item is one of those big six items. And the game is really good about giving out like belts and things, but if you spent a feat to be good with a Fishard, suddenly you're getting diminished returns. Normally in Pathfinder, this is fixed one of two ways. Either A, you have a wizard or a witch or an intelligence based something something, roll a spellcraft check, something something it's arbitrarily easy and here's that exact item you wanted, or the GM sees what you're trying to build and sees to it, your character has that thing. Of course, Kingmaker would be a little pressed to do the latter, but the former is so easy. Literally, they could just hand you an advisor. Literally, I guess like the storyteller could have done this for you, but he doesn't. This is doubly a pain because Kingmaker has so much downtime for the people who aren't adventuring with you, there's literally a skip day button if you don't want to, you know, go out and adventure to let events resolve so it's not hard for someone to enchant whatever weapon it is you want to use in your game. Next up, and this is kind of in the same vein, the second thing I hope Alcat fixes when they do Pathfinder, uh, do Rise of the Rune Lords. I think that would be fun. It's iconic. When they do that one, though, the loot tables and things merchants have for sale should be relevant. In most cases, they are. I distinctly remember fighting a Kraglinorm, everybody attacking it at once, as we are wont to do, and we killed it. 
but didn't have anything to break its regeneration, so, you know, we had to loop the whole thing back after running back to town, buying a cold iron weapon and coming back, which is fair. What is not fair, and I'm kind of paraphrasing here, in fairness, I went and looked at my autosave log from Varnhold's lot for the exact item, watch my Varnhold's lot playthrough. I don't remember totally what it is, but I remember it was very enchanted, and I want to say was very good against lycanthropes. And of course, when you see that item, which is for sale from a merchant in a town that's rapidly going to become super sad, well, what's your first thought? Your first thought is, I need to buy this. Why? Probably going to be lycanthropes around. I'd like to open. Now, I also will freely admit, running through Lost Lion Keep at the end of Varnhold's lot, I didn't see everything. My party wasn't the best for the very, very, very... I'm going to quote Josh on this one, put the Tomb of Horrors to shame kind of dungeon that that is, so I could have missed a werewolf, but I didn't see any, short of like maybe that's why that giant mimic was so powerful, I don't know. The point is, gold is a limited resource. Gold is an important resource for gearing out your characters, and so I think it's important that we are only offered things that will be good for us. This is doubly true in those very grindy dungeons, which, like, okay, it was really hard, but I don't have a problem with that. I enjoy being challenged. What I have a problem with is finding a secret door. That secret door opens. There's some kind of loot type thing. You pick it up. It's a magic falcata immediately after, and you're in super big trouble. It's a little counterintuitive, and it feels like I was punished for picking up a thing that a, is ultimately useless to me, and B, isn't going to see play in the immediate future, again, unless I happened to have a character in squad and maybe one of the hirelings Carity wants you to take is proficient with the Falcata, unsure, but none of my party was. It was literally just dead weight that I can't sell. Though I suppose I am given to understand there will eventually be a merchant pop up somewhere that I can buy these items back from. Even then, in the moment, it was not helpful. And that's a problem, because that dungeon is a grind. But that's not the one I'm here to rag on the most. And, like, you guys know if you've watched my Kingmaker stream, what's about to come up? Worse than everything is the fact that the real conflict in Pathfinder Kingmaker has kind of just been overlooked, and that's a huge problem. The game is not man versus man, the game is not man versus the first world, the game is not man versus harem's manic depression, no. A conflict that never happens, that by Pathfinder's own lore should have happened immediately, or at least very soon after, at the Temple of the Elk, is between Jaithal and Tristan. Now, for those of you who don't know why that is, let me, real quick, let me back it up, explain what I mean. Tristan is a cleric of Serenret. She's one of the most iconic deities, like in tabletopness, now that someone in Critical Role boarded her to 5e. But just straight off the Pathfinder wiki, Saren Ray is a neutral good deity associated with healing in the sun. She teaches temperance and patience in all things. Compassion and peace are her greatest virtues. And if enemies of the faith can be redeemed, they should be. Yet there are those who have no interest in redemption, who glory in slaughter and death from the remorseless evil of the undead, full stop. Jaithal's an inquisitor of Urgothoa, the goddess of do what you want, take what you want, enjoy life's pleasures, also the undead, also is a sentient undead creature who is given her form literally by her goddess to be her goddess's inquisitor. At no point, at least that I've seen, and there may be, I hope, honestly, something more than like witty party banter between Tristan and Jaythal were something along the lines of like, Jaythal, you're being horrible, don't do that. But I am horrible and I like it. The party foraged for four hours and got hot cha cha Right, there should be an immediate, Tristan steps in, Tristan says something about this, and Jaythal, who in the Temple of the Elk basically just turns into a high school girl and whispers behind you, oh gosh, that's a Serenite. I really don't like them. No, it's more than that. It should be, I am going to walk you back to the path of the light, or I'm going to send you to the afterlife violently. This never happens, again, at least to my knowledge. Now, if it happens at the end of the campaign, then okay, that's something I didn't know about. That's on me. 
but it is a pretty gross violation of Pathfinder's lore that, like, we just don't talk about this. Also, though it's not necessarily in Erastal's faith, old Jehad should probably have something to say about it too. Sure, if a Razzman follower finds you, but, like, undead in Pathfinder are universally evil, terrible, bad things in such a way that Jaithal and Tristan cannot exist in the same room, in the same party, in the same barony. It is impossible, according to Pathfinder's lore. Now, there are a couple ways this could have been handled, in such a way that both characters could still exist in the game. You would see one or the other, and like things would happen, and based on your alignment, you would go this way or that way. The first one, obviously, is at that scene, at the Temple of the Elk, or whenever they happen to meet, there's just a, like, you have to choose, and whoever you don't choose leaves forever. But that's boring, right? We just don't want them to walk away. Think more like Samara and her daughter from Mass Effect. You can have Samara's daughter in the party if you're willing to kill Samara, or rather, I guess, like, let Samara's daughter do the dirty work. I don't quite remember. It's been a while since ME2. What can I say? But that creates a whole different paradigm in the game that, you know, brings the lore of the world that we have taken from the tabletop into the CRPG actually, like, full circle instead of just, I'm an undead, I'm spooky, and then here's your Ecclesiathurge in the back. Oh, on that note, I guess quick addendum as well, a like third and a half, a, a 3.5 thing they could have fixed as well is I think there should be a better tutorial for those of us who are not as into Legacy Pathfinder who jumped into Kingmaker. Do you know how many people I've seen post on forums complaining about the fact that Tristan cannot wear armor? Yeah, no, his archetype gets essentially the Arcane Bond class feature in return for that armor. Just a little quick, hey, are you sure? More than a thumbs down on a recommended for someone who's like, eh, the game thinks I could do something more optimal, but I want armor! Click, and now you've wasted a defeat. Is, it'd be real nice, is what I'm saying. Especially if the next Alcat Paizo game takes place in Legacy Pathfinder. But, that's all I have to say right now. What do you guys think? Do Jaithal and Tristan eventually come to blows? Without spoilers, because I'm very allergic to spoilers. Just like a simple yes, no, maybe. What do you think Kingmaker got wrong? Did Kingmaker get it all right? How we feel, let me know. We'll keep the conversation going. And remember, you can catch all of our back episodes of way too many Mastodons in a party. Mm, fourth thing, I had no idea that dog was Ekin's dog, and I lost a ranger because I didn't see it because I wasn't looking where my party was walking at the time. And I'm still mad. Anyway, Kingmaker this week will be Saturdays on Twitch, link in the description. See y'all next time.